Hi, it's Nell. And today I am going to be talking about a plant that I have a lot of experience with. It's what I consider to be the easiest trailing house plant. It is the pothos. So this is all about pothos care. And yes, I stand by that. I think it is the easiest and the best trailing house plant. It is um, not only easy to care for, but it's easy to find. You can find it at garden centers, nurseries, big box stores online. It's not one of these plants you have to search for. And it is also inexpensive. I think for this one, um, which has grown a bit, I think I paid like $8.99 or $7.99, so it's not gonna break the bank. Now, there are lots of great trailing house plants. You can bring some of the succulents inside. They can trail, there are spider plants. There's the heartleaf philodendron. But the pothos, I think, just looks the best. It's the sturdiest. And it also can tolerate lower light conditions. It is a very popular plant. That's why it's very easy to find. It also grows really fast. It also grows relatively fast, actually, in a greenhouse in your home. It might grow a little bit slower, but we'll get to that later. I um, did a post, Five Things to Love About Pothos, and Lucy, who used to work with me here at Joyous Garden, who was a totally, total beginner gardener, did a post, New to Gardening, 11 Things to Love About Pothos which I helped her on that also. But this is just a care, a care video because I haven't done a full out care video and I thought it's about time. As usual, there is a post to go along with this video. There'll be more details and some pictures in there for you. The link to that will be down below and also on our website. If you go to the search bar and type in pothos, you will find it along with the other posts about pothos. And it is known for these long trails. It just can trail and trail and trail, but um, you can also train it over bamboo hoops or you can train it to grow up bark because in nature it grows, it can grow up trees and it actually clings to the trees and it um, can get a little bit invasive. That's why it's called devil's ivy because the leaves just get so big and it, um, I think I read somewhere that it can go like 60 feet up a tree and it just clings onto it. But we don't have to worry about that in our homes. And this goes right along with trails. The size, it is usually grown in either a four inch pot, a six inch pot, an eight inch pot and I've seen it also in a 10 inch pot. When it gets um, oftentimes in the six, eight and 10 inch, it is in a hanging plastic pot and that's how it's sold. Um, indoors, probably the longest I've seen it with is 20 foot trails. Uh, mine is probably already about maybe, maybe four feet long and it's a relatively young plant. I just got it like maybe a year ago and it has grown quite a bit, especially now that it's warm. I zoomed in on this one a little bit so you can see because now I'm going to talk about varieties of pothos. This is a very common variety. It is the golden pothos. Um, it has a little bit of a goldish green in it and larger leaves. There's also the Marble Queen, which has white in it. Um, there's a Jade Pothos that is solid green. Um, probably my favorite is Neon. It's a Chartreuse. Um, Enjoy, Glacier, Pearls and Jade. They have smaller white and green with variegated leaves. There's a Blue Pothos and then there's one that's called Patho Silver Slash, um, Slash, Splash, but it's actually a type of a philodendron, but they just call it Pothos. They're all related. And then there's um, a relatively newer one called 
Jessenia, and it is just like this golden pothos, only it has more chartreuse in it. And there are other varieties too, I'm sure. These are just the ones I know of. So different growers in different parts of the country offer different ones, but you can definitely always find the golden, the marble queen, and usually the, the jade. Now we're gonna switch over to the pothos enjoy. As you can see, this is a much smaller one, but uh, I wanna talk about growth rate on pothos now. I found them to have a moderate growth rate. As I said, the golden pothos grows moderate to fast for me, especially in the warmer weather in the summer. And I am in Tucson, Arizona, so we have a lot of sunlight and we have long, long days and we also have a warm weather for a long time. Now on to exposure. Um, it's billed as a low light house plant and it does tolerate low, low light. Um, I would say low plus. It does best in moderate light. That's its sweet spot. But you can also have it in highlight too. You just can't have it in a sunny window. It has to be if it's um, bright, la, like a west exposure or a south exposure, you want it probably at least 10 feet away from the window. And this one uh, needs a little bit more light to bring out that white variegation. The golden pothos doesn't need quite as much light, but if it's not getting enough light, it'll revert to the solid form which is the jade. So if you want to keep the beautiful variegation in your pothos, moderate light is the best. Now on to the million dollar question, how often do I water my pothos? And that is, uh, I can't quite say, I, I water mine about every week here in the summertime, maybe every nine days in the winter when it's cooler, but you wanna water it thoroughly and then let, let it go almost dry and then water it again. Um, it depends on how warm your house is, depends on the size of the pot, the type of the pot. I've done a post and a video called House Plant Watering 101, which sort of um, tells you the factors to consider, but I would say no more than once a week. Temperature. This plant tolerates a wide range of temperatures. And as I say about all house plants, if your house is comfortable to you, it'll be fine for your house plants, including the pothos also. Fertilizing. I don't fertilize my house plants. Um, I, I might start at some point here. I'm not quite sure. I'll see. I will definitely let you know. But I do uh, worm compost and compost them every spring, just a little bit. I need to do a video about this, how I do it, because if you do too much inside, it's too strong. It's like you don't want to fertilize or uh, amend with anything that's too, too strong. Outside, it's going to break down faster than inside. So that's what I do. But you can use a balanced organic houseplant fertilizer would be fine. Um, the fish emulsion, uh, kelp there are some sea blends that are seaweed and kelp and fish emulsion all together that would be fine um, and you want to do it in spring and or summer once in spring and once in summer would be fine and don't over fertilize because you can burn your plants soil just any good organic potting soil We'll do, just make sure that it says that it is formulated for house plants on it so that it's not too heavy. You, you want it to be rich, but you also want it to be well-drained. And in terms of repotting or transplanting, it's not hard at all to do. As, as, as I said, this is a tough plant. The only thing you have to deal with as they get this size is the trails. So I usually tie them together somehow so that it's easier to do the transplanting and I usually go up a pot size that enjoy that you saw the other pothos that one 
um, is in a four inch pot. I'm going to be transplanting it probably at the end of summer or maybe next spring. I'm not quite sure because I want to put it in a bigger pot at some point. So I go up a pot size. Yeah, that is what I do. And spring and summer are the best times to transplant it. So if it's in a four inch pot, as I said, I'd go up to a six inch pot. If it's in a six inch, I'd go to eight inch. Eight inch, I'd go to 10 inch. Unless it's extremely overgrown and you have it in a six inch pot, you could always go up to a 10 inch pot. It's, that is not a problem. Pruning. Yes, you can prune it. Just make sure your, your cutting implements, your pruning tools are clean and sharp. And the reasons why I prune it are to, um, to control the length if I need to, um, and also to propagate. But, uh, but another reason you might want to prune it um, is that it can, if it's been underwatered or overwatered, it can lose the leaves in the middle. And uh, then the stems are, you have foliage up, you'll have some foliage up here and maybe not that much down here. So you can cut the stems back to rejuvenate more growth coming out of the top. That's how this plant grows. Or if you just want it to get a little bit fuller at the top, you could just pinch to go up a node. These are plant nodes, go up a n node or two and I don't think I could do this, even though I've got nails, I don't think I could because it's a, it's a tougher stem. So I would definitely use my pruners or my handy dandy Fisker floral nips to give this a little pinching so that it would um, uh, stimulate some of this fine new growth up here or more of this fine new growth. <laughs> and speaking of propagation, it is so easy to propagate this plant. I like to do it in water. I find that is the easiest way to do it. Um, I'm going to zoom in so you can see better what I'm talking about. But there are um, roots that are coming out of the back of the nodes. And those um, are just going to grow in, into bigger roots. So you would just cut it like right here, perhaps, and uh, take off a few of these leaves here and then just put it in a jar or a glass of water and voila, in no time, you will have roots and you're on your way to a new plant. So I had somebody ask me once, what are the brown spots or nodes on the stems, they called them. And see it right here? That is actually a root, a root forming and they are up and down the stems. Oops, I don't know if you can see that there and there. Remember I said they uh, grow up trees and they attach? Well, that is what they use. Those roots growing off of the stem and that's what makes them so easy to propagate. Oh, and you can also grow pothos in water. I'm not quite sure for how long. I thought I had somebody comment on my blog once that they had grown it it had been growing in water for a long time. The longest that I've left it in water for is eight months. So um, I think it will grow in water for quite some time. And if anybody can uh, shed some inf information on that, if you've grown pothos in waters, in water, in waters, in water for a long time, please let us know. So now we're moving on to pests. My um, pothos, a pothos that I had in Santa Barbara did get mealybug. Um, this one hasn't gotten any. Uh, I remember them getting when I was working in the interior scape trade. I remember seeing them with spider mite and scale, but it's not, you know, you don't have to worry too much about it, but just keep your eye out for them. Um, and I have done posts on mealybug, scale, and spider mites. I will leave the links down below so you can, if you, so if you think that your plant is infested with something, you can identify it and take action. Pets, like cats and dogs. This plant is considered to be toxic. Um, I haven't done any tests 
on any of my cats or dogs, so that's not something I do. I always consult the ASPCA website, so I will leave the link to that in the post so you can see what effects it will have on your pet. But with this one, I don't think you have to worry too much if you have it up above and trailing down. Um, it's going to be harder for your pet to get to. So I'm just going to tell you a few things that are good to know about this plant. Um, if I have forgotten any, I will leave them in the post because I always write the post after I do the video. But uh, let's see. If you have yellow leaves on your pothos, it could be caused by a few things. Either too much water. Usually if it's too much water, they turn brownish in, in, in the middle first. Or it could be too dry, too little water, uh, too much sun, or too much fertilizer, which means like either too much of an amount and or too frequent of fertilizing. It's uh, they have a lot of salts in them. And uh, if the leaves are really limp, that usually means it's dry. And uh, on the other end of things is root rot, which is too much water. And this plant, like a lot of them, is subject to root rot. Now, what kind of a pot you have it in really doesn't matter. Um, these are both in plastic grow pots. You could grow it in a fiberglass pot. Um, you could grow it in a ceramic pot. You could grow it in a terracotta. I've seen it growing in terracotta quite a few times, so that's not a problem at all. And I did once have somebody ask me, a reader asked me how to get the spacing of the leaves on the pothos to be closer. And on like a variety like golden pothos, you can't do it, it's how it grows. So if you do want the spacing on the leaves to be closer for whatever reason, um, these the smaller the smaller varieties are are for you oh and if you see some little brown tips on the leaves don't worry on the on the very uh, tips of the leaves don't worry about that it's just um, the dry air because these plants are native to Southeast Asia which is the tropics and most of our homes are not the tropics. Like for me, I live in the Arizona desert. That's definitely not tropical. Oh, and if you're wondering about the curtains in the background, it's not uh, because I want some harem type of a atmosphere or because I need any, any privacy. I'm very private here, but it's all about protecting the fleshy succulents. <laughs> string of pearls and string of bananas from too much of the hot sun here. I also have a curtain over there because I have the fish hook. The fish hooks and I also have burrow's tail, so I don't want them to get too much sun. So that's what's, so that's what's going on with the curtains fluttering in the background, creating atmosphere. We used pothos in so many offices and commercial buildings, it was crazy. It was the go-to. It was the go-to plant for file cabinets, um, tables, that kind of thing, in lobbies, because it is such a tough plant. As I said, it's a very vigorous grower in nature. The stems get huge on it. And as um, mine is growing here, these stems will get bigger and fatter also. But you can easily Train it up a big old slab of bark if you like that look too. Just get a piece, good old piece of wood. Good old piece of wood. <laughs> it's hot. Um, a good chunk of, chunk of wood or bark or driftwood isn't quite wide enough, but just something substantial that it can grow up and onto. And you'll just need to start, start to train it and then it'll attach itself. So that is a different to look if you don't want it to hang down. I will leave a link to the post that goes along with this video because it will have more information and I'm sure I've, I've forgotten to say something. So it will be down below along with the other posts that I have done on pothos. So you can find it in the description box down there. You know we have a houseplants category on 
our website. So you can go to joyousgarden.com, categories, click on houseplants, and all the posts will come up about all the different houseplants that I've done. Posts on, and they have videos to go along with them also. And if you are super interested in getting into houseplants, I have written a uh, ebook. It's a very simple guide, very clearly explained with um, the listing out 27 house plants that are tried and true, they're durable, and they're easy. It's called Keep Your House Plants Alive. The link to that will be down below also. So there you have it, all about pothos, or all about pothos care anyway. What I consider to be the easiest trailing house plant. This one is just adorable. Oh, how cute. Um, so I hope you have found this video to be helpful. I will just sit here and pet my house plant for a minute more. So I hope you have found this video to be helpful. And uh, please come back because I have a lot more videos coming your way. I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. I really appreciate them. Now let's get out in our gardens or in this case, into our inner gardens, or our inside gardens, <laughs> and make our world a more beautiful place. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.